Um, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Relational Leadership portion of the Virtual Leadership Summit 2015, hosted by and content provided by the Performance Coach. So we are very much looking forward to have you participate in the content that we've created for today around relational leadership. I'd like to share a little bit about who I am and how I fit into the picture. So my name is Sharon and I am the managing partner for TPC US, which basically means I oversee the business there alongside country managers and managing partners for other countries that we have um, around the, uh, the globe. We've actually got uh, quite a rigorous global footprint and we've been growing quite quite a lot over the last couple of years and we're very happy about that. Um, so I, I'm the host for today and I've written a, a couple of pieces myself that contribute to the day but mostly the content is generated by other managing partners from around the world as well as some of our leadership consultants and other partners. So um, it, that, that's really important to us that we have a global perspective because uh, diversity of thinking is very very valuable. And so that's what I'm going to give you an overview about today. So essentially the aim of, to, uh, of this particular conversation, which is, is a fairly brief one, is just an overview of, of what the day is about for us. So we'll look to explore the concept of relational leadership. We'll also take a few minutes to discuss the importance of relational leadership for you as leaders. Like, why is it important? Why should you, why should you worry or care about it? And then share a little bit about the content of the day that we've created for you as a sample of, of uh, relational leadership as we look at it. So I'd like to just check in with you for a moment and just see how present you are for this conversation. On a scale of 1 to 100, 100 being fully present and available to listen to this, and one being entirely distracted, where would you put yourself on that scale? Let's make a mental note, reflect on that. And if you find yourself at about the 60% present mark, really take a look at what that 40% distraction is. Could it be that you just need to sort of stretch out in your chair a little bit and just get a little bit more grounded? Is there a couple of emails that are really bothering you right now? And might it be helpful just to sort of shoot a response off to those emails and just say, I'll, I'll be right back to you shortly? Maybe it's helpful to pause this session and, and come back to a little bit later when you have uh, a little bit more time to relax and really listen. Whatever makes the most sense to you in terms of how to lessen that 40% distraction. Now, I, I'm asking you that question not just to have you be present for this conversation, which is a brief one and it's an overview of, of the day, but it's, it's very much to practice one of the principles that we think is really important in leadership and that's being fully mentally present. Now, being fully mentally present is uh, the basis of self-awareness in, in personal leadership, which is uh, the topic we covered yesterday. Uh, and I'm going to propose to you that in actual fact, being fully mentally present is key as you build relationships and, and invest in the relationships around you. And that when we're not fully present, when we're not fully present, that people actually really notice that. So I'd also like for you to, to reflect for a moment on what is it that you need to do to get the most out of today's content. I'm imagining that for some reason, probably a very specific reason, you're really attracted to the idea of relational leadership. And so I'm sure that there's something in the content that we've provided for today that will speak to a situation that's going on for you right now in relationship to another person, professionally, maybe even personally. And so as a leader, I, I'd like to, for you to really consider what do you need to do to get the most out of today's content? It could be just as simple as like, spending 30 minutes really listening to one of the webinars without any interruption. Right? That's plenty. And also to, to really, again, dig into this idea of what your primary learning objective is for today. Again, the reason I'm asking you that is because I, I imagine that there's some reason that you're specifically attracted to this content. And so really sort of what is it that you want to learn or, or maybe is there a specific situation that you want to address that you think that this content might be helpful in, in, in doing that. So I'm going to give you a couple of moments to capture any thoughts around those questions. So uh, I think it would be helpful for us to begin with well, what, what do we mean by relational leadership here at, at the Performance Coach and 
sort of what we've come up with is that at the heart of relational leadership is the capability to navigate the matrix of information exchange between people and to translate that information into meaningful interactions that create mutual value. Well, that's a fairly substantive uh, quote there. Well, what do we actually mean by that? Well, I think, you know, without sounding too clinical about it, in any given moment when we're talking to another human being or interacting with them, there's all sorts of pieces of information that are exchanged. Some of it is the nuances of body language or tone of voice, facial expression, or even a micro facial expression. Some of it is the energy that you, you see that person demonstrating. Um, and some of it is the, the emotional subtext that that lies underneath the words that they are saying to you. And, and as I said, there's a, a sort of a, a matrix of information flooding us in any given moment where we're in relationship to another p- human being. Now, that, that gets a little bit more complex and layered when you start taking into account that there's a lot of information that you receive when you're in person with somebody. When you're on the phone with somebody and you can't see them, then it feels a little bit more difficult to navigate that information. And even even tougher still, I would argue that the the exchange of email is really, really challenging when trying to really decipher what's going on in the relationship. So it really is cultivating that capability to navigate the matrix of information exchange. And then to take that information that, that you see and to interpret it in some in some way, to some degree, so that you can translate it into something that is meaningful to the other person and creates mutual value. Now, we're not suggesting that, you know, in, in terms of translating this information to something that's meaningful for the other person, that it means that you, you're not part of the equation. Very much so. You know, as leaders, we have a finite amount of time and a finite amount of energy. And we have to be mindful about where we place that against the priorities that we say that we have or the strategy that we have either personally for our team or for our organizations. Because if we're not placing the finite amount of time and energy that we have in any given day or any given week alongside the things that we say are important to us, then it's going to be very difficult for us to be successful. So translating the information exchange between us and another person into something that's meaningful for them is also about creating mutual value. So it's it's valuable to us and to them. That doesn't mean that every single interaction is equally valuable to us and to them. What it means is that over a period of time, the ebb and flow of value between two people within a relationship feels fairly equal. So that's the the overview of relational leadership uh, as we see it at The Performance Coach. And so I want to share a little bit with you about the content that we're going to be exploring. Now, for us, relational leadership actually spans many topics. We think that emotional intelligence is very much at the heart of relational leadership. We think that uh, having the capacity to handle difficult situations and to resolve conflict in powerful and peaceful ways is very important as we relate with others. Because it's not always a bed of roses. It's very complex and sometimes quite complicated and quite frankly, sometimes difficult to deal with other people. So how do we navigate that with a little bit of grace and staying grounded as leaders? So we have six installments in today's um, day, in the day, the content for today. And so one of them is very much about the impact that trust has on employee engagement. Now, this is not a new topic, I'm sure. It's something that is revisited often because it is so key and such a prevalent part of a culture within an organization. Uh, But one of our consultants out of uh, TPC Italy has put together some very practical tips on how you you can increase your trustworthiness. Now, Leo has done a lovely job of putting that article together, and it's a really interesting read, so I encourage you to do that. We've also got an article written by one of our consultants, Vaselina, who's out of the TPC Belgium office, and she takes a look at the similarities and differences between coaching and mentoring, and how you can answer a request for this from someone on your team. Now, sometimes that seems quite simple. You either say yes or no. But what she's proposing, it's a little bit more complex than that and to really think about what the implications of your answer are. But more importantly, what do you need to consider as you make that decision? Now, we've also taken a look at how you can resolve conflict-filled interactions, both peacefully and powerfully. 
And we're very lucky to have had uh, uh, one of the consultants out of uh, the Italy office, uh, Bernardo, who uh, teaches this at a local university in, in Italy. And he's put together um, some tips, some strategies and techniques that you can use to really navigate conflict and conflict field interactions, particularly, excuse me, partic particularly and in a peacefully and powerful way. Now, uh, the fourth installment for today is actually the mindset of being in service to others as a leader and how that might be able to help you powerfully build relationships as well as navigate difficulty when it shows up. Now, this is something that I myself have authored, Sharon from TPC Boston. And uh, it's very dear to my heart, this, this mindset shift that I'm encouraging and inviting leaders to make. In, in making the mindset shift to being in service, there is something that happens that allows us to navigate difficulty much more easily. What I've done is I've created a model and some six steps for you to take a look at walking through, like, for example, pick somebody in your life that you're having a little bit of difficulty with right now. And it's, being, it's feeling pretty hard to connect with them and walk through the model um, of that particular webinar as presented in the webinar and see how that impacts your capacity and ability to reconnect with them. The fifth installment is from a, a, a consultant in the US and Stephen has put together an article around the impact that noticing and appreciating has on someone's capacity to change. And he's asking you, he's rigorously inviting you to take on the skills and the practices that he's proposing in the article because research has shown that when you do this, it has a huge impact on somebody's capacity to change. Now, I'm pretty certain that in managing a team, as a leader managing a team, that there are probably one, maybe, maybe more people on your team that are in the process of, of going through change personally, developmentally. And so it's, it's, a, it's a really powerful read. And last but certainly not least, um, for another consultant in the Italy office, we have listening as a vital communication tool. And Sandro, who wrote this, um, actually is hosting this webinar, this is a webinar, um, really focuses on what does that mean, um, you know, listening, what does that mean when dealing with diversity? So there we are. Those are the six installments around content that we have for today. And this content um, is a sampling of the concepts and principles that sit behind our understanding of relational leadership. But we feel like it's a really um, healthy um, sampling of, of what it is that we, we have on offer and, and our approaches to relational leadership and, and, and allowing you and, and helping you to um, become more impactful as you relate to others. So, Thank you so much for taking a moment just to listen to an overview of what we, we are inviting you to participate in to today. And I'd like to take a moment to ask you to reflect on one insight or learning that you may have taken away from this ever so brief overview. Was there something that I said that sparked some curiosity in you? Was there something that I said that sort of um, began the process of getting a little more clear about the situation that you currently find yourself in as it relates to relational leadership. I'm going to give you a moment to reflect on that. And if by chance there is an insight or learning that you've taken away from this brief overview, is there an immediate action that you can take? And it could be as simple as making sure you listen to the article, sorry, the webinar or read the article that felt most relevant to you as I was talking about them. Well, once again, thank you so very much for joining us for this overview. We really do hope you participate in the remainder of the day. If you have any questions at all, I would like to reach out um, and ask a question live. You can find my contact information on the website that is listed here at the bottom of the page. It's the performancecoach.us.com. And as I said, my name is Sharon. You can call the office and someone will put you in touch with me directly. You can also visit the website and uh, fill out our contact form there, which is literally your name and email address. And you can send me a question and I can either get back to you to answer that question directly, or I might actually even answer it on the video blogs that I produce every two weeks as it relates to relational leadership um, and leadership in general. 
um, particular emphasis on personal connections. So thank you so very much for, for tuning in. Um, and 